To our science-based solutions for anxiety course. In this video, we are focusing specifically on nutritional components of anxiety and nutritional recommendations to help you resolve and reduce your feelings of stress and anxiety right now. I'm joined by Dr. Kieran Kirkendall. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So you have a background in functional medicine, functional neurology, applied kinesiology, uh, how many people would you say that you have helped with anxiety? Well, thousands, thousands. As a matter of fact, myself, where I got started in this whole journey as I got really, really sick when I was 18 wow. and got progressively worse and progressively worse, was going to all the allopathic and medical physicians I could find, the very best. My mom was basically dragging me in there because the anxiety was so bad that my, my chest would just do this oh, and the yeah. EMS would come and pick me up and haul me off. It was severe. It was really severe. And that's why I'm really passionate about it. So I would go to the hospital. A lot of times if I could drive myself and just sit there and wait until I felt like I was going to die and I would kind of crawl in, they'd put me on oxygen. And guess what? They would tell me everything was okay. Well, everything's fine. You're crazy. Here, take an antidepressant. Here, take an antiacid, you know, and let's just disrupt all of your body's natural physiology. And I got worse and worse and worse until I found a practitioner that did what I did when I was 18 or 19. And I had been struggling. It was actually about 17 or 16. I was getting really sick, but it really, really came to an apex. As if 18. teenage years aren't stressful enough. Yeah. This anyway. Was, and you're seeing this more and more and more. And so a lot of people never meet full, full anxiety, but they meet deep states of depression or they meet deep states of like, you know, attention deficit. And they're, they're all kind of in the same family. And we mm. can talk about that if you're interested. But today what I really wanted to talk about is like, what are the main stressors, mm -hmm. right? So what's actually happening, right? right? So what's the main thing that's happening when somebody has that anxiety in your body's like this and you're convinced you're dying? Or it could be really extreme like that, like I used to suffer with in all of these thousands of patients that I worked with on this because it was such a passion of mine. Or it could be very minor where you're just sitting there reading the newspaper knowing that you should feel better, but you just feel this internal state of like doom and gloom and anxiety you're like oh my god what's happening here right and then just not knowing what's wrong yeah that kind of snowball effects um and then to be told by the doctors oh there's nothing wrong with you it's all in your head mm -hmm. i mean what could possibly be worse well the frustrating thing is if they're in medicine and here's the great thing about the other types of practitioners out there and now allopathic you know medicine is slowly waking up to this right but the way that they're taught is it's a different philosophy. They're looking for diagnosis. If there is no diagnosis, meaning they scan through the usually very, very short amount of blood tests that they cover because insurance covers very little because insurance is not your friend. They are there. They are a business. They are there to make money. They don't want to cover this stuff. They're not there for philanthropic. It's a business. $3.8 trillion a year business, right? So and they only are the, health hanging in the balance. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Just two jumbo jet airplanes crashing every day in the United States is the equivalent of how many people are killed every single day in the United States by properly prescribed pharmaceuticals. Every single day. Remember that plane that went and disappeared or something that was a Singapore flight or something? Mm -hmm. This is two jumbo jets, the equivalent of the amount of people that are killed every day crashing in the United States. If you want to talk about front newspaper. That's that. Not a missing plane in Singapore, although that was a terrible thing to hear. Right. Well, and I, but I just think that people just don't realize, you know, how many people's lives are being affected. Um, and, you know, how many people are going to the doctor and having them say, oh, there's nothing wrong. Your levels are normal. Uh, and, you know, that's so frustrating. Uh, but I do truly believe that there's a great deal we can do for ourselves. Um, and then, of course, working with a doctor of functional medicine who's really going to do the, the Sherlock Holmes, as I like to say, yeah. of helping to figure out exactly what's going on in your situation. Mm -hmm. So to look at anxiety in particular, you know, what is the, the pathology, so to speak? You know, what's going on inside of the body that creates that feeling of stress and anxiety that we experience so often? Yeah, absolutely. So when a doctor looks at your blood test, so they're going to try to find out, okay, what's going on inside this patient's body? The way medicine is actually taught is they're looking 
for a diagnosis, they say, oh, this is the thing. That's the thing. That's what we got to handle. Well, here's this drug, and that's how, you, that's how you do it, right? Well, most of the time, those numbers may be functionally off, and so they'll be a little bit high, a little bit low, and the doctor's like, well, there's no concern. It looks like you're depressed, or you have this other thing going on, so you, know, you need to go see a counselor. But the reality is, what's going on is we were talking earlier about blood sugar and oxygen, where your blood sugar is doing this, your oxygen states are low. So, you know, if you want to hear more about those videos, that's where you would go is to look at that video for that part. Right, but part one of this part course one. where we mm -hmm. talked about uh, physiological components of anxiety. Yeah, and that's super huge. But what's actually happening is that you're in a stress state. So there's two primary states, sympathetic tone, parasympathetic tone. Sympathetic is I'm running from a tiger. <sighs> and I'm stressed out and I basically feel like I'm going to be attacked. And the things that you don't want to do when you're in a stressed state of being is you don't want to stop and have a nice meal, right? You don't want to make love to your boyfriend or girlfriend because you don't really have a sex drive. You're trying to run from a tiger, you know? Right, you may have fight or flight. The fight or flight. You may have more difficulty going to the bathroom or even have irritable bowel syndrome, right? Where you have very fluid bowels and then one day you just don't move your bowels because the bowels get messed up. And so there's a lot of different things that will happen. On the other end of it is parasympathetic tone where you feel very relaxed, you feel very calm, you easily digest your food versus sympathetic where you just, your stomach just food just sits there and your mm -hmm. peristalsis is all disturbed. So what's happening when you're running from the tiger is your first stress response system is your adrenal system, right? If I were to shoot a gun in here right now, you would shoot out the window do some superhuman strength, you know, and you would be, be out the house and down the street. You wouldn't even know you could do it. What allows you to do that is that cortisol surge, right? Boom, right? Cortisol. But with cortisol surge, over slow periods of time, like you get an email, oh, the kids did this thing at school today. Oh, I got to go pick up the kids later this evening. Oh, I got to do the TPS report. My boss is yelling at me. And my, my wife is giving me her name. Whatever the thing, your story, everybody has it. Right. These low doses of cortisol all day, all day, all day, mm. fatigue those adrenal glands that sit on top of the kidneys. That's why they call them the suprarenals, right? They sit on top of the kidneys. They get tired. And they actually can physically begin to shrink from the size of prunes down to even raisins. But regardless of that, is as those get fatigued, your ability to handle stress goes. So now your cortisol is actually getting lower and lower and lower. I mean, it'll be high for a while. It's kind of like before you go into diabetes, you get higher and higher insulin, and then eventually the pancreas is just, we're done, and you get total failure and you have diabetes. And cortisol from the adrenals, cortisol gets higher and higher, and it stays constantly higher, and you get trunkal obesity, and you start getting fat around here, and you start losing your hair, and all of these symptoms, like, your skin is aging, you know, and you're, you're getting little spots on your face, like these liver spots. There's all these symptoms that come. You feel puffy. Your hormones are messed up. You can't sleep. Mm. You're grouchy, you know, and people are like, well, there's something wrong with me. And my doctor says everything's okay. Well, we have to, if we opened you up, you would know your adrenal system is just in the floor, right? And then coffee consumption. I coffee. mean, that's another big stressor on the adrenals, right? A delicious one. And yes, it, what it does is it causes the adrenals to fire. And because they're always firing, so the first thing in the morning, most people are stressed out. What do you get to do when you first wake up? You grab your phone, like, oh, God, I got to do all this stuff. Then you kind of do your thing. You, you know, microwave your, your hot, uh, hot pocket or your Pop-Tart because you don't have enough time. You drink your coffee or better yet, go to a st you know, st store to get a coffee. It's got lots of sugar in it. And you're on the roller coaster from the beginning of the day. And you yeah. wonder, why am I right stressed? Right out the gate. Right at the gate. And so we, we need to think a little more broadly and think scientifically and intelligently. Just because mm -hmm. it doesn't show up, this is the thing on the blood test. And thank God, because you're actually what I call in the gray zone. And if you're in the gray zone, the doctors really don't know what to do. But that's kind of good because now we're not putting you on drugs to fix something that's actually, if you changed lifestyle and did some basic nutritional adjuncts, which I want to talk to you about here in a second, we will totally shift the direction of your life very, very quickly. Right, so how do we support the adrenals? <laughs> okay. Huge, huge question. So number one, like we talked about in the last video, is balance oxygen and glucose, right? If you don't do that, you're missing everything because if you don't have enough oxygen, you're going to feel like you're being straggled all day long. And so check out the first video in the series. On this one, what we want to talk about is, number one, is you need water, right? 
I like to think of it as an automobile. It's like a car. And so when you're driving the car, you have to have water in the radiator. If you don't put water in the radiator, you're going to have problems. The car's going to burn up. Mm -hmm. So many people in our society today were drinking things like diuretics and coffee and tea and soda. Every single equal diuretic you take with caffeination, caffeination in it or alcohol, it pulls out that equal amount in ounces of water. So you're dehydrated. You don't know it. You're walking around a desert. So that's one. Mm -hmm. Car's burning up. Two is fuel, right? Is that what kind of gas are you putting? Are you putting in Supreme? Or are you putting like the totally wrong thing, diesel? Take that car into an auto mechanic and you say, what's wrong with you, man? You're like, putting the wrong fuel in the car. But we don't do that with the human body. No, no, we're too smart for that. <laughs> right. Well, I think, and I think the, the automobile is just such an awesome, uh, you know, metaphor or whatever for the body. Because, you know, people think about their car, they take it in for a tune-up. Mm -hmm. You make sure that you're putting the right gas in it. You get regularly scheduled oil changes. Mm -hmm. You know, if there was a, a problem with your car, mm -hmm. you're not going to just take it to one mechanic and then be like, okay, $3,000, here you go. You're going to go get a second opinion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people even get a third or fourth opinion on yeah. their car. Um, but people aren't even doing that with their health. No. They go to their doctor. They accept it as the one answer. They're feeding their body, you know, things that are, they know that they shouldn't be eating. Mm -hmm but that they do it anyway, and then they act like it's gonna work fine. Um, but people can really think with that. Well, you know, mm -hmm. if you were putting a ve you know, vegetable oil in your gas tank, would your car run? No. Of course not, no. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I just, uh, I think that's such a great, um, you know, just point of comparison for people sure. to understand. You, you've gotta put the right thing in the gas tank, mm -hmm. uh, just as a, just basic, oh. you know, core kind of understanding. Yeah, makes sense. The next thing, turn down the volume on the radio, meaning your life is way too loud, way too noisy. You know, you, f you go and rewind the tape and the human story uh, 50 years ago of where, whatever city most people are living in. Just think about Austin 50 years ago, where, mm -hmm. where we're from, Austin, Texas. You know, you think about, you know, any of these other towns, they have grown very quickly. Uh, with the advent of technology in the last 10 years with the, uh, with the uh, cell phones and the, and the uh, smartphones, right, mm -hmm. have accelerated everything. So the noise is so loud. Turn down the noise so you can start to hear. Slow the car down a little bit, you know. Pump your brakes versus just hitting the brakes because you're going so fast. Mm -hmm. We are riding our systems too hard and then people come in and they say, fix me, doc. And I'm like, man, you know, like you are riding this car in extreme weather conditions, you know, right. and then you're coming into the mechanic and saying, uh, you know, so we think it's kind of nuts that way. So nutritionally, right, we got oxygen, we got good fuel, right, which we covered in another video series, number one. Now we want to talk about nutritionally, what can we do? And mm -hmm. one of the main ones is your adrenal system runs off of glucocorticoids, which is a fancy word that comes from mineral corticoids, which really means it comes from minerals. So the short answer to that is eat lots of good minerals that will feed your adrenal system. Okay. That will really help stabilize your system. You actually feel more relaxed. Magnesium allows your whole system to feel <sighs> actually really, really calm. It's just cool. All right. So we've got minerals and then we've got all the B vitamin pathways, right? B vitamins are super duper important. They allow your body to methylate and clear. It's one of the three primary liver pathways. So they help to strengthen you. They help to actually up increase oxygen, mm -hmm. but they actually give you energy. That's why you hear B12 shots in your butt and in your leg and those kinds of things. That's how that works is they actually will energize you and feed the adrenal glands. Right. Make you feel more calm, which is good, right? So then we have good fats because good fats will keep your blood sugar from doing this. So good oils, right. chia seeds, you know, fish oil, those types of things, krill mm -hmm. oil, choose your thing. Uh, what do you call it? Um, OCT or the oil, the, uh, the MCT, MCT oil, oil, medium chain triglycerides. I'm a coconut, tr it's tried awesome. to true coconut oil person yeah, myself. You know, it's but, awesome. Totally. You know, um, pick what's right for you. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when you look at, you know, the modern food industry, so to speak, uh, you can see that there has been this huge trend towards low fat foods, fat free foods. Mm -hmm. Now, not only has this created a billion dollar weight loss industry because people can't fill up without fats, mm -hmm. um, but what it has done to the functioning of people's brains, mm -hmm. what it has done to um, just 
you know, people's ability to, to function in so many different parts, uh, parts of their lives almost always comes back down to, you know, how, what are the fats in your diet? Oh, I eat a low fat diet. Mm-hmm. And people think it's healthy and yeah. people think that that's what it's supposed to be. Now it's, there's definitely plenty of unhealthy fats out there, totally. you know, the fried foods and the processed oils. And of course those should be avoided. Mm-hmm. Um, but the idea that you're going to take the fat out of your milk or the fat out of your peanut butter, mm-hmm. um, is just so atrocious to me on so many levels. Um, so I think it's it's important for people to be reminded that you do need those good fats. Mm-hmm. And if it's weight loss that you're worried about, it's not the fats that make you fat. Mm-hmm. And the totally. fact that they've totally taken the fat out of the food and then replaced it with sugar mm-hmm. so it'll still taste good. I mean, not only has that made billions of dollars for the sugar industry, mm-hmm. uh, but what it's done to people's health, their ability to lose weight, their ability to handle, handle stress mm-hmm. um, is just... Uh, it's just atrocious to me. It's a, it's a crazy thing. And a lot of people really think that, um, you know, and I can understand where that confusion is, but in the world of physiology, which is the study of like the, the function of the body, right? To keep it simple, um, is, is that people think that a high fat diet causes cholesterol, but the actual reality is there's, you know, you've heard of LDL and HDL, right? Mm-hmm. LDL is supposedly the bad cholesterol and HDL is supposedly the good cholesterol. But Whoever, whatever, however we became, I don't think there was things that were actually put us in the in the beginning into our bodies that were bad, right? This right. was a marketing ploy to sell you Lipitor and other types of drugs. But what the th- important thing is to understand is that fats actually will proper good fats will actually lower cholesterol states, and that the cholesterol actually goes up due to inflammation, right? Mm-hmm. The higher the inflammation, the more cholesterol. And so if you're running from the tiger and you're in that sympathetic tone that we were just talking about, where you're like stressed it's like having more cars driving on the highway and now the more cars driving on the highway we need more wear and tear on the vessels on the lumen of your body right mm-hmm. so we start to have more work crew that comes and patches up the holes that's essentially what cholesterol is so mm-hmm. we lower cholesterol best through dropping inflammation and the biggest source of inflammation today is our life and work environment and sugar so really looking at those two big ones is wow. actually so tied in, but nobody talks about it because I can't sell you a pill for that. Right. Well, and, you know, I, I mentioned the sugar industry a moment ago, you know, I mean, that's a multi-billion dollar industry and they don't want to tell us anything that would make us eat less sugar. Um, so demonizing fats, mm-hmm. you know, demonizing the egg yolks, I mean, you name it. Um, and I think that it's, you know, it's just something that, the consumption of sugar is just, it's just so secondary for people now. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't even take a second thought about the literal amount of sugar that they're consuming. Most of us don't even realize it. it. Um, But you know, just as like, hey, one simple thing you can do, Mm -hmm. reduce your sugar. That's gonna reduce your inflammation. It's gonna help reduce your cholesterol. And then you have this, uh, you know, just kind of feedback loop Mm -hmm. Um, where, hey, this is actually going to end up helping to fuel your adrenals, help you handle stress, help you have less of those feelings of anxiety, mm-hmm. and boom, all you had to do was reduce your sugar intake. Totally. What could be easier? Yeah, yeah. It's a, a lot of this stuff is really, really simple. It's not rocket science, and it makes sense to all the thousands of people I've worked with. When I start talking, they're like, oh, it makes sense, and they start to do it, and I always say, proof is in the pudding. Don't believe me. See it in your own life. Let yeah. me assure you, you will. You'll come back in two weeks and be like, sleeping better and all these things are better so the next piece right we covered water we covered fat we covered minerals and b vitamins and obviously nutrients like good vitamins in your diet so mm-hmm. i like a good vitamin mineral mix i like liquid mixtures i'm not going to you know plug any specific companies but look into those companies that are phyto based meaning coming from nature mm-hmm. you don't want to necessarily default to centrum silver that is probably some of the worst stuff you can do because it has the lowest grade of all of the things you can get because it's produced by a pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. But it's also probably the number one vitamin supplement sold and people can't even digest them because of that shellac they put on the outside. It's a crazy story, I won't get into that right now, but be aware, the more liquid, the more, the eat it with food so your body can digest it and absorb. Because you're not, you're not what you eat, you're what you're, you really absorb and break down and ingest, right? Yeah. So what you can actually absorb into your system. So finally, one of the other things you can do for all of that stress, 
physiologically, right? We're just talking about nutrition and those things mm -hmm. is adaptogenic support. So these are herbs primarily coming from the rainforest and other jungles of the planet. There's so much of our pharmaceuticals that actually come from the jungles that they, the companies take, the natural constituents. But we, the better that I've seen is take the natural constituents. Mm -hmm. There's different things like ashwagandha and all a whole list of things. I, I personally don't like to just take one type of herb for a person. I like to do a synergistic effect. So you basically yeah. are taking a few different herbs, right? Mm -hmm. So you take those few different herbs in as support. And I, I personally have very, very specifics and I'm very, very picky when I work with individual patients and clients. Mm -hmm. But just knowing that there's a few mixtures that you can take, really, really supportive, right? right. Adaptogenic herbs. And then finally, there's even glandulars, right? These are porcine and bovine glandulars that come from, you know, young, young calf or young uh, pig or those types of things. Those are extremely, I know some people don't particularly like that, so we don't use that on those people that don't particularly want to go a non-vegetarian route. But when your system's really tanked and you're exhausted, it'll bring you right up. And mm -hmm. I tell people, if you're this down and out, like honestly, if you did this for two weeks, it'll bring you up strong enough to where the adaptogens will start to help and support. Some people's systems are so floored, and then we get diagnosed with like what I went through with chronic fatigue, which means you're always tired. That's not a diagnosis, you know? Like my buddy could have told, hey man, you're always tired. That's, so you're a medical doctor now? Or <laughs> fibromyalgia, which is fibrous pain in Latin, right? So they're telling you you have fibrous pain. That's not a diagnosis. Like, where is it coming like, from? Doctor? I could have told you that my entire body hurts. Yeah, that's, that's why, why I I'm here. To you. Exactly. So what ends up, this is the real nuts and bolts where it hits people at home, is people's lives are at stake here. This is serious, serious thing, and we're seeing more and more and more of it because just with the cell phone technology and the new computer stuff is we're getting so much information overload. We're getting so much stimulation through the optic chiasm, through what we call the superior colliculi of the light and sound. There's so much information. Mm. Your brainstem is bombarded. And so people naturally feel so overwhelmed. And so getting out of that and always going and going and going right. is really where the biggest support and what I like to say medicine is in this thing, which doesn't involve medicine at all, but it's like getting out into nature, maybe really looking at the underlying reason why you're in that office with me in the first place, which is, hey, I think maybe you hate your job or maybe it's not really fulfilling your heart's potential or what you're really here to do. Mm. And you're really resisting doing what your calling is here to have you do. And that's why after a while, after so many thousands of people, I was like, you know, I think I'm ready to take that to another level and start talking about the biggest issues. And doctors can make a lot of money and, and see a lot of patients just treating the symptoms, even from a natural standpoint. But we need to go deeper in like the heart. Right. Yeah. And that's our topic for our next video. Yeah. Um, but I think you touched on something really important there in talking about the herbs and using a synergistic blend that's mm -hmm. really specified to the person. Totally. And, um, you know, so getting back to that topic of, you know, working with a doctor of functional medicine, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot that you can do in just taking some of the supplements, you know, that we've recommended here, mm -hmm. but actually working with somebody who's going to, you know, tailor make a Very protocol hard. specifically to your life. You mm -hmm. know, there are so many different parts of us that dictate um, what our bodies need, you know, our age, where do we live? What is our background? What is our diet like? And there's just so many oh. components uh, that working one-on-one -on -one with somebody who's going to create a program just for you mm -hmm. um, is really so important. Totally. And it's not the same as, oh, well, I prescribed this drug, this drug, and this drug. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so people actually can work with you one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yeah. yeah, they just, you know, they can go to the website and actually sign up and we can start to start that conversation. Because mm -hmm. if you say, if you're building a house and you say, hey, put a, put a kitchen in my house, you know, like that would be ridiculous because everybody, well, I want an island. I want this type of tile. I want it to look like this. I want like an open floor plan. Yeah, you know, with the windows, <laughs> you know, I've got this praying baby. Everybody's different. And so 
We need to be very specific. And let me tell you, people that do this will save so much time, so much energy, and so much money and heartache if they will just do a little bit of work with it. It's not an expensive process. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you're out giving a gift to the world again because we're, we're, you're back in your body. You're meant to be alive mm -hmm. and to live and enjoy life, not manage your stress and manage your freaking anxiety. Let's, let's actually right. play and have fun here. Right. That's why we're here. And I think that's so true. You know, so much of our, um, you know, kind of just fast paced lifestyles has us, you know, kind of stagnating in, I have back pain, I have anxiety, I have this issue, I have that issue. And there's this whole, you know, amazing life that we should be living. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get past the back pain and the headaches and all these little things that are preventing us from really living our lives. Yeah. Um, and that's what, you know, life empowered is all about. That's what right? it's all about. And the reality is for you, like, could it be possible that I'm struggling with adrenal stress? Ask yourself these questions. Do I get grouchy if I don't eat? Do I feel dizzy if I stand up? Do I have issues with my hair? Like my hair is falling out. My skin seems to be aging faster. You know, I get cold hands and extremities. I feel depressed. My libido is low. I feel just worn down. These are all signs and symptoms and they get more and more extreme, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but those types of symptoms are warning signs. You know, if you just feel run down and not feeling that good, there's so much you can do if you catch it early. And we're seeing this in kids even now, yeah. which is very concerning for me. And this is, this is affecting fertility, people not being able to have children. So they mm -hmm. come in with more severe things. And when they do, they even have children with learning disorders. And pretty soon, like the 2030 uh, prediction from Dan's is that one in two children is going to be autis autistic. That means if you have four kids, statistically half of them will have autism. Now this is an actual oh environmental uh, and, and this is a human crisis because if a man and a woman who the, the reason that we were here with opposite sex is so we keep our species alive. If we literally, all these fertility clinics popping up, if we can't keep our species alive, we have a human problem. So this is something I'm very, very passionate about. I love looking at and make it simple and uh, that's what I'm here to do. So. Well, and thank you so much for being here. I'm really looking forward to uh, the rest of the videos in this course, and right. I just can't thank you enough for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us for this video. I hope that you'll join us in the next video in this course, and I hope that this information helps you to feel better right now. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next video.